Listen, I know you don't make any mistakes, but I do. So today I want to talk about some of the common mistakes we make as Spring developers. On a recent episode of the Spring Office Hours podcast, wait, what? You haven't heard of that yet. Ooh, you got to head over to springofficehours.io. The episode we're talking about today is season three, episode four, common Spring developer mistakes. We had a whole discussion on some of the common mistakes and how we might improve upon those. Today, I want to talk about five of those in a little bit more detail and we'll show some code. And I want to make this kind of a recurring thing. I have a big bucket of these mistakes. Uh, if I were to make that video now, it'd be probably hours long. So we're going to stick to five today. And if this is interesting to you, we'll we'll do another one. So the repo for this, head over to github.com slash Dan Vega spring common mistakes. There are only five in here right now. Those are the ones we're going to cover today. If we want to add some more to this, we will. And this repo is a little bit unique. The main branch has like the end all code, like the good, this is what it should look like. But we have a bunch of start and stop finish branches. And so that's how we'll kind of go through the code today. So if you want to clone this down, you can go ahead and go to like one start. And that is what we'll start with. And we'll talk about the problem. And then we can always uh, write the code or switch over to the finished branch and talk about how we might improve upon that. Uh, so with that, let's do that. Let's head over to uh, IntelliJ IDEA and talk about mistake number one. We're going to start with mistake number one, which is making everything public. So I've switched over to the one dash start branch. We have our package dev.danvega.1. And the great thing about Spring Boot is that there is no requirement on where you put your code. You're basically given an empty package and you can kind of do what you want. I mean, there are some things that won't work, uh, but for the most part, you can go ahead and write your code how you see fit. Now, one of the ways that has been popularized over the years is something called package by layer. And it's where we have a layer for every different type of uh, layer in the system. So we have a controller layer, a model layer, a repository that talks to the database, a service that handles business requirements. We could have things like config and security and whatever else it is, right? So we have all these layers. And at first glance, it might seem like this is okay because it's a really nice way to organize your code. I know where all the controllers are going to be. I know where all the repositories are going to be. Uh, I know where everything is. But the problem is even in just this simple case where we're using a single resource like to-do, everything has to be public. The to-do controller has to be public. The to-do repository needs to be public. The to-do service needs to be public because they're all in different packages. And if one needs to talk to the other, and in this scenario, they will, they'll have to talk to everything, right? Uh, everything needs to be public. And this is not normally how we write Java code, right? And in general, we wanna keep all of our code uh, only visible to uh, those that need to talk to it. In this case, uh, that's the case. It needs to be public because everything is kind of talking to each other. Now, you can imagine a scenario where we have a lot of controllers and a lot of repositories and a lot of services. Everything's kind of crisscrossing, talking to all of these different things. And again, just not how we write Java code in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at one uh, dash finish and check that out. And we'll go ahead and check that out. And now we've moved everything into a single package. We are now packaging by feature. So in this case, we have all the things related to to-do in a to-do package. So the to-do controller no longer needs to be public. The to-do repository no longer needs to be public because the controller is talking to the repository and they're both in the same package. And by default, the access level is going to be package private. So we are in the same package. So these things can all talk to each other now. In a bigger project where you have multiple features, uh, some things might need to be opened up to talk to other things. But I think starting with this approach where everything doesn't need to be open to everything uh, is a much better solution. So again, not a wrong way to do it, and I hate to call it a mistake, but if we can get away from making everything public, uh, I think we're going to uh, be able to write some better code. So that is, for me, mistake number one, making everything public. All right, mistake number two is using field level injection. So uh, 
We're here on the to dash start branch. We're going to open up our to do controller. In this case, our controller is dependent on something called the to do repository. So this is marked with at repository, so it would be put into the application context. And now we need to get an instance of that in our controller. And so we have this find all method. It needs the to do repository. How do we get an instance of it here? So right here, you could see that we are using the at autoware annotation right on the field. And this is bad for a couple of reasons. One, it makes uh, it makes testing a lot harder because this is using reflection. If we wanted to go ahead and maybe mock this out, that becomes a lot harder to do. And even IntelliJ is probably going to tell us, hey, field injection is not re recommended. Please don't do that. So let's head over to uh, two dots finish and check that out. And let's see how we can improve upon that. So now in the to-do controller, now we can make this uh, field final. So we're saying private final. And what we're doing is we're asking for an instance of it in the constructor. This is also known as constructor injection. And this is the recommended approach. Now what happens here is actually this is implicitly using at autowired. You don't need to do that here because it's a single constructor. But there is a to-do repository. So Spring will go ahead and inject this at runtime for us. We can assign it to this variable, and now we can use it to call find all. Now, the other thing here is that this makes it much easier to test because we can mock this out. When we know that we have to create a to-do controller, when we have to pass in a to-do repository, we could send in our own version of that. So we can mock the repository out, send that into the constructor of the controller, and now we have a controller with a mock to-do repository. Instead of creating this integration test, we can do this unit test on it. Uh, again, just a, a really nice approach. So when in doubt, uh, always favor constructor injection, always feel over field injection in Spring. And that is my number two mistake, avoid using um, field level injection. All right, mistake number three is using an interface and an implementation when it's really not needed. Now, I will say this is less of, an, I see this mistake less these days. Five years ago, I've seen it, uh, I saw it a lot more, uh, but less today. But I do want to cover it just so uh, we can talk about it. So I'm on 3-start branch, and if we take a look, we have a to-do. This is a record. We have a to-do controller. Uh, so we are um, declaring a final variable here called to-do service, and uh, we are going to get that in the constructor using constructor in injection. Then we're going to call off to to do service and uh, find all. Now, what is the problem here? The problem here is we have an interface, and we have this interface called to do service. And there's an implementation here, or there's a method here called find all. And then we create an implementation of that to do service, and that to do service find all um, is actually returning a list of new to dos. And so we're implementing that to-do service and actually providing our own implementation here. And the idea is I've seen this a lot with like CRUD methods, right? Like, hey, I need to save something, find all, uh, create, read, update, delete, right? And there is one implementation of it. There is never going to be another implementation of it. And I know a lot of people have done this in the past when they say, yeah, I'm going to create a JDBC implementation, and then I might create a, a NoSQL implementation, and like that just never happens, right? So if you are going to create an interface, you should have an idea that this is a contract that other implementations might need to live up to. In this scenario, where I'm just creating CRUD methods for the service and providing an implementation, I don't think that is a really good use of our time. So let's jump over to 3-finish, and we'll check this out. And if we look in 3, uh, we have just the to-do service declaring the find all method. If you come back later and decide that you do need an, an interface, it's pretty easy to do in your IDEs. You can split this out to an interface type and then uh, implement that. Uh, it's fairly simple to do. In the case of 
where I might do this is where I actually need that interface, right? So I have another example here where I have a notification service and I have a, a method called send. In this case, I know that I'm going to provide multiple implementations of this. I'm going to have something that is able to email a notification. I'm going to have something that is able to uh, send a notification via SMS, right? So in this case, it makes sense. So I'm not telling you to stay away from interfaces, but stay away from the here's an interface, here's the default implementation, and I'm never going to have other imp implementations of it. So that is mistake number three, the interface with the single implementation. Mistake number four, improper REST API design. Uh, sticking with our to-do theme, I have a to-do class here. It has uh, three fields. It has a, an all args constructor and then a getter for each of those. So basically, we have an immutable class here. Um, we have a controller, and I want to talk about the way that this controller is designed. So when we have a resource, we mark this with that REST controller. We say the request mapping is slash API slash to do. So that is how we are going to call our REST API. The problem that I see is that not using REST to its kind of intended way. And in this case, we're saying, hey, if you want to get all the to-dos in the system, this method will do it, and this method's fine. It's the URI that I have a problem with. So to get to this, you have to call slash API slash to-dos slash get all to-dos. And that's not really the recommended approach. We're supposed to use the same, re the same URI here and then switch between methods based on the request method. So we'll talk more about that in a second. So um, in the second one, I'm saying slash API slash to do's slash get to do by ID and then the ID. Um, I have an add to do, I have an update to do, and I have a delete to do. Um, so these names in the path variable here, or in the path here, are improper for me. And I think there's something that we can do to kind of improve upon that. So let's go ahead and check out for finish. Where are you at for? There you are. Let's check this out. And let's look at the controller now. So now we have slash API slash to do's. And the root of that is going to be a git mapping. And that is what returns a list of to do's. You should just know that at the root endpoint of this API, given that it's a git request, that is going to return a list of things. Now, we could have like pagination and filtering and, and so on, but that's, that's time, you know, for another time. For now, um, we have that there. And then if you provide an ID with a git request, then we know that that is to get a single resource. You don't need the um, API slash to do slash git uh, to do by ID. That's just implicit now. We know that if it's a get request and there is an ID, that it's going to return to me a single resource. So again, um, post at the root knows that we're going to create it. Put at the root plus the ID. We are updating it. Delete. Um, oh, and this should be gone. Delete at the ID and we are deleting it. So that is just a quick way, well, make sure that we are kind of staying conformed to the REST API pattern and switching based on request methods. That is my mistake number four, improper REST API design. Mistake number five is improper exception handling. Now, we could do a whole long video on all of the things when it comes to handling errors, handling exceptions. I'm gonna kind of narrow this down to just kind of one example. Uh, but it covers, um, you know, it could cover everything when it comes to exception handling. So I have uh, in the five dash start branch, I have this same to do. I have a to do five controller. And again, I'm naming these different so that I can keep them all in the same repo. And we're asking for a repository. The repository has a find all method and it has a way to find by ID. So one of the places this will come up is, okay, let's ask for an ID and let's go ahead and return a to-do. So in the um, to-do5 repository, we have a collection of to-dos. This is a list. And all we're doing is saying, okay, let's stream that so that we can filter based on the ID. So if the ID passed in here is equal to that, then go ahead and find that, else go ahead and return null. So um, this is, 
and actually, you know, sometimes uh, in this this in this case, this returns uh, the find first returns an optional, and then you're saying return all. Sometimes I don't even see this. I just see hey filter return get, um, and so sometimes that will just throw an error, and that error won't even be a proper error, right? It will return like a 500 uh, if you try to access that object, and it's not really telling the user anything that's going on. This is a little bit better because it returns a null, but again, if you try to access this null and do something, then that's going to throw an exception, right? And so this is really not great design. It doesn't help the user out to let them know that, hey, you're asking for something by the ID of 99, and we don't have that. Let's go to 5 finish, check that out, and see how we can improve upon this one. So we'll go into 5, and we have our to do 5 repository, but we see something else here now. Now we see, okay, if we're going to filter on that, let's find it, or else let's throw a custom exception here. And this custom exception is a to do not found exception. The big thing here though is we're adding the response status of not found. So now when we go ahead and throw this, we'll basically say, hey, this is not found. Uh, to do with ID 99 was not found. So now this gives the user some indication of what happens here. And as you can see in Spring, uh, being able to create your own custom exception, very easy, very, very easy in um, Java to be able to say, hey, filter by this, find this, or else throw this thing. And so I thought this is just one example of how we can improve upon uh, some user experience here with a custom exception. There's a lot included in Spring to help you with exception handling and handling errors. So go ahead and dig into the documentation with that. But again, this was number five, improper exception handling. I hope you found that useful. Five common mistakes we make as Spring developers. There are a whole bunch more. Uh, if you have some common mistakes that you see in your organization, things that we didn't cover today, please do me a favor, leave me a comment below and we'll see if we can tackle that. If this is something you're interested in, I talked about at the beginning of the video, do you wanna continue uh, this little series of topics? Uh, if that's interesting to you, please let me know in the comments below. But hey, I hope you learned something today. Again, I know you don't make mistakes. This was more for me to make sure that future me has somewhere to look up this. Funny thing is I always like, there are a lot of times where I search for a problem and I end up finding a blog post or a video that I've done. So this is for future me, future you. I hope you didn't make this mistake, these mistakes. You should know not to make these mistakes. But hey, if you did, if you found some value in this, friends, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. Yeah.